Hi everybody, welcome to Eating Peace this week. I am using my cell phone, actually I have a pretty new cell phone, but I'm using my cell phone because my laptop, I'm putting my cell phone in exactly the same spot that I always put my Eating Peace videos for my laptop, but my laptop is running out of room and I don't know how to delete anything else. So a little bit of a different format, but it's same kitchen, same me, same person, same sharing about eating peace. And what I uh, was really struck with today was that it became 80 degrees or something in Seattle, Washington, where I live, Fahrenheit. I know we're in the dark ages in the United States using Fahrenheit. The rest of the world is Celsius, but it was hot. It was a, a summer day. And I know compared to my old Midwestern days of Kansas and Texas and Oklahoma when I was a little kid, this is still nothing. But last night I was walking along in the beautiful inky blue dark sky, 11 p.m. at night, completely clear, full moon shining in the sky, little tiny specks of stars, I had a sleeveless shirt on. And I was thinking, wow, this is, reminds me of the memories of being in very warm places where even at night you needed to wear your shorts and a t-shirt and maybe you could go swimming even though it was late and there was no sun out. In fact, it almost worked better because it was so hot during the day. And when that happens, a lot of people think not only about the weather and the atmosphere and the experience of feeling in their body, the heat, but they also think about body image. I sure did. With all those summers in Oklahoma, wearing bathing suits around all the time, there was some point in my growing up when I went from not self-conscious at all to exceptionally self-conscious. Worried about the bathing suit, what color it was, how it looked, if somebody was looking at me, and certain kinds of bathing suits feeling much more uncomfortable than others. Now, sometimes people feel like they don't even want to wear shorts or sleeveless shirts or anything that reveals any part of their body and the skin and the actual tactical body to the outside world. Really powerful. I know that if you've listened to anything Eating Peace before, it's all about these underlying, deep, very, very stressful, very painful, a lot of suffering about that other people are looking at me and they will have judgments. They will think I am bad. They will think it's wrong, ugly. Um, and then what? You know, it's really interesting to think then what would happen? Rejection, abandonment, not part of the tribe. It's almost like this old brain, this mind that's very interested in just protection and being included just gets really fired up. And we think that that means something that it needs to include the body. You know, the body needs to be accepted by these other people. And uh, I could be very, very rejected. And then we were rejecting ourselves like crazy. Sit down. And one thing to do is to really consider this thing that you're calling ugly that you want to hide. This thing that is so ugly and you're just sure no one should ever see it. Because if they did, all would be revealed and they would have these judgments and you would never be chosen, you know, or included or loved, whatever it is. It's kind of a, a crazy, it falls apart more quickly than you think. And it, I don't care what kind of body you have. I know sometimes in my life people say, well, you've never been, you know, obese, or you've been lucky to have a pretty decent body. You know, you've been sort of part of the top, the, the greater culture of what's acceptable. But I'll share with you one thing that's kind of funny. Um, as I've entered my 50s, you know, I can notice these different things happening that are called aging. But stuff is happening with the skin and the body and the sagging. And, um, and I know I always have tended to be a little late, you know, so I wind up looking younger than my age or whatever, just compared to the general population, whatever. That's not going to happen forever. This is going down. I was doing yoga, just some yoga poses while I was teaching a retreat down at Brighton Bush Hot Springs and I was in my cool cabin and I was doing some yoga poses and stretching and I did have shorts on um, and I saw, you know, I was in that position that's called downward facing dog and um, basically if you don't know it, your face, your 
you're looking at your knees and your hands are down on the floor and your feet are down the floor and you're kind of in a big V position. Your head is facing down and you're just sort of stretching and holding that position. And I could see my skin looking right at my knees. And I have this huge scar on my right leg uh, where a cancer tumor was removed when I had cancer, sarcoma. And um, the skin, I mean really on both legs, was just sagging like around this whole scar. It was just so loose I kind of looked at that. But here's the interesting thing that I really wanted to share with you. I looked at that with fascination. I was just like, that is absolutely fascinating what happens. Things are sort of relaxing, 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 just, uh, you know, expanding <laughs> and, 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 you know, kind of caressing themselves down into this soft place. Look at, look at that what happens in reality. I mean, that's my skin. Is it true? I have something to do with that. Is that true? This is my body. Is that actually even true? Who is the one looking and saying, that's mine? You know, if you ever, um, like, looked at your hand, I always love this exercise, there's your hand. Do you ask it, you know, what's the meaning of life? Or can you help me go grocery shopping today? It's just sitting there. It's just a hand being itself. And this skin was doing the same thing. And I did not have the reaction. I was stunned. So I thought, I am not having the reaction that that's disgusting. No one should see it. How horrible. You know, I need to cover it up. I just didn't have that feeling. It wasn't like I looked at it and thought it's oh so beautiful. But it just didn't matter. It just didn't matter. And really, I attribute that deeply to being aware of how profoundly filled with suffering it is to think that your body has something to do with love, with people loving you, you loving yourself. Go stare in the mirror. And I tell you, if you have stressful beliefs about it, write them all down. Be vicious and unedited and ridiculous and absurd and childish and non-PC and just write them down. You'll have these concepts and then you can begin to inquire. That is ugly. Is it true? You might say, yes, so true. Can you absolutely know it? Are you, are you like the, the king or queen of the entire universe and you know what ugliness is? I mean, are you the one who, uh, you know, came, came here to decide and know? I mean, how do we know something's ugly and something's beautiful? How do we even know, except that maybe someone says this is beautiful? Someone says this is ugly. We learn it and we feel it and we adopt it and we take that in for ourselves and decide, you know, on, our, on these preferences. So who would you be without that story? Who would you be without that story? There was some time uh, a while back in doing the work and doing this work very deeply on my body. I mean, I got naked and I looked in a mirror at every part. I let my eyes fall on the things that I thought were the most disgusting about my body. And then I took out that piece of paper and I wrote down what I didn't like that I saw this is ugly, this is too saggy. And then you need to ask, why? What's the most disturbing thing? What's, what's the worst that could happen? Why is this so terrible? And really let yourself have an answer instead of like, oh, shh, I must be, my mind must be crazy. I must be ridiculous. Who cares? I know it's not really me, you know, it, it's really fine. Positive thinking, positive thinking. No, let yourself go ahead and see what it is you've been deeply conditioned into, let it reveal, you know, if I look like that and if I'm ugly and if I'm too old and if I'm too fat and if I'm too saggy and if I'm too, like, what's the worst that could happen? And then just see, no one will love me like this. No one will connect with me. I will not be picked. I will not be chosen. 
Is that true? You can imagine yourself never chosen, never picked, never loved, in, you know, and just see, is that true? Will that, are you positive that will happen? Who would you be without that story? And then turn it around. I am picked already. I am beautiful. The saggy, these saggy legs with a scar right across the middle of it that are kind of, hang, the skin's hanging down is amazing. <laughs> it's just incredible that it does that, that things can relax like that and turn it. I, I have lived so long that my, I, I'm able to see this interesting change, you know? If I hadn't lived this long, I wouldn't see this. And I don't know, you just see if you can find advantages to you being exactly as you are. And I know that can be really hard. I know I'm making it sound like it might be easier than it is. I know it can be very hard. But just a reminder that you have been conditioned. When you were zero to three years old, you had no idea that somebody's body was fat and somebody else's body was thin, or that that was ugly and this is pretty. You didn't know. You came in clean slate. And it's just you began to hear things and people said things to you and people said things about themselves. People talked about themselves in front of you. People talked to each other. No one even needs to have said, you are ugly. You can just have heard the implications all around you and you just take it in and adopt it and it's now yours. You can question it. That's the good news. You can question it. What I will tell you is some time ago, after I was doing the work on body and my thighs are too big and there's too much cellulite on my butt, you know, and <laughs> all those kinds of things that happen, um, I noticed that as, as I began to walk accidentally past mirrors or glimpse myself in a building in the glass, my instant reaction started to become, oh my God, you cute thing. Seriously, I never, if you knew what my mind sounded like in the past, you wouldn't believe it. It's the same person. It's the same mind. It isn't the same mind. Something new has occurred to it. It's like, oh, aren't you so the cutest thing in the world? My goodness, you are just beautiful. That would be the automatic. I don't have to make myself try to think positively. It's automatically the way my mind was working. You can do that too, because if I can do it, the one who hated themselves and didn't want to ever wear shorts and didn't want anyone to see this body in the summertime, if I can do that, you can do it too. All right, let me know how it goes.